Ash, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I want to talk to you about something Sonic related. The Sonic movie, baby. So we both uh, saw it not too long ago. Actually, you saw it even more recently than I did. Uh, we both saw it together in San Francisco, but you literally just got back from a second viewing at the Hollywood premiere of the movie. Isn't that right? I did, yeah. So they had the uh, the official blue carpet cr- premiere, because it's Sonic. It's got to be the blue <laughs> of carpet, course, right? Yeah. Uh, they had the blue carpet premiere in Westwood, and I just got back from that, and it was a lot of fun. I saw the movie a second time, and... Uh, you know, with an audience of not only fans, but, uh, you know, the cast and crew. And I got to meet the voice of Sonic, even. So Ooh, it was a cool night. That's pretty exciting. Did he sound just like Sonic did in, in the movie? Y- you could hear it. You could <laughs> definitely hear that quality in his voice, but he didn't sound just like him. Got it. Okay. Now, before we get too deep into this, we should talk about how spoilers are going to work in this discussion. Because at first, we're not going to have any major spoilers at all. We're going to avoid specific plot points and jokes and all that. We'll only be talking about the movie in super generic terms. However, a little bit later, we will get into a spoiler section where we start talking about uh, specific plot points and maybe tell about you know talk about some jokes. So we'll give you a warning before that happens. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers at all, we'll give you enough notice to to opt out at that point. Finally, at the very end of the video, we will get into the very big spoilers, including the ending, post credit scenes, and all that stuff. So if you want to avoid the big stuff, make sure you tune out at the very end. But again, we'll give you a warning before that happens. All right, and with that, let's get to the actual discussion. So Ash. You are the big song guy, of course. You you love this character probably more than is healthy. <laughs> yeah. What did you think of this movie overall? You know what? I liked it. Uh, as I said in, in my review, actually, that just went live very recently, um, I liked it on the Game Explained scale. It's, it's a fun kids movie. Uh, it's definitely flawed. There are some pacing issues. There are some characterization issues. I feel like some plot points are a little bit contrived, but... You know, as I said in my review, this isn't supposed to be Oscar bait. I think it's a fun Sonic movie. I think it's a fun kids movie. And I think it I think it does a pretty good job of of delivering on both fronts, both for Sonic fans, as long as they're open minded Mm -hmm. and not, you know, expecting the game on screen and non Sonic fans, maybe parents who are taking their kids or whatever. But I had a good time the first time. And as I said to you before we started, I actually enjoyed it even more the second time. So, my perspective, uh, as you probably know, Ash, I'm not what you would call a (laughs) Sonic fan. With that said, I'm familiar with the character, you know, and I like the character himself for the most part. (laughs) Um, So, I was curious about this movie, and and, and I did go in with an open mind, even though I was expecting kind of a train wreck. And I think it's with that perspective that maybe, you know, that possibly influenced my enjoyment. But I also had a good time with this movie. I had a good time. I was expecting a train wreck. It wasn't that. It's not an amazing piece of work. But it is a fun one. It's a fun, silly movie that I think works better than um, than I think most people, or than at least we expected, based on the premise being fairly generic sounding, where, you know, you have the CG character that's an alien that drops into Earth and is hanging around with humans, basically. But I think they actually made that idea work in this uh, in this case and i don't know fully why that is yeah same and i think that's because you know the 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 personality and that vibe of sonic really does come through i mean he's characterized a bit differently than he is as modern sonic in the games but i mean i, I think it's it's because you never quite forget that you're watching a sonic movie you know it's like you're not it never feels like a just 100 percent generic kids movie there are parts that feel a bit generic kid movie-esque, like the the bar scene, in my opinion, that gets a little close to, like, feeling a bit generic in terms of what you'd expect from a kid's movie, mm-hmm. but for most of the rest of it, I don't think you ever go very long without remembering, hey, no, you're watching a Sonic movie, and it <laughs> feels like a Sonic movie, yeah. and I think that's maybe the difference. Yeah, Sonic's on screen, like, Sonic's a near-constant presence in this movie, unlike, say, Transformers, or the first Transformers, where they, they weren't really into that much. It was more about the humans, and that's definitely not the case here. So yeah, I, I was just really surprised by how much I really did enjoy it. Now, make no mistake, I do think this film is geared towards primarily two types of people. Children sure. and Sonic fans. Yeah, that's true. Those are the two groups that are going to enjoy this movie the most. If you have, if you don't have kids, or if you're not a kid, and you know nothing about Sonic, you probably, you're probably not going to get a whole lot out of this movie, I think. Um, but as long as you have some passing uh, a familiarity with the character, I think you'll enjoy this. Um, at least on some level. I know, you know, I did. Uh, but, you know, it's not perfect. <laughs> Clearly, it's not probably right. anywhere close to perfect. The biggest problem is just the middle third of the movie. I think you already touched on it a little bit. It drags sure. a bit. Um, this it is does. when this You touched on it in the review, especially. This is when they enter the, uh, the road trip portion of the movie, basically. And there are some fun parts to it, but it just takes way too long. Um, whereas it's actually bookended by the best parts being the opening and uh, the conclusion, I thought. So, yeah, the middle segment is is just a little bit dull. 
Yeah, it is a bit dull, and and that didn't change upon my second viewing. Like, even though I did enjoy it more, um, that was the part at which I was kind of shifting a little bit. I'm like, oh, man, I, I want to get to the third third of the movie because it's so good, you know, so much better. And mm -hmm. I, I, my favorite part of the movie probably is the final third. Um, and so, you know, that definitely still felt a little bit long in the tooth. Although I do think that for part of that uh, has to do with the previews as well. I mean, it is a, a, bit, a bit long in the tooth anyway, but... A lot of the previews have focused in on that road trip segment of the right. movie. So if you've been like us, have been following every trailer and and following this movie to release, you've seen a lot of the best parts of that part of the movie already. So it's not as interesting when you're in the theater seeing it. But on top of that, yeah, that's just kind of when the movie lose, loses a bit of its momentum. Um, but thankfully, not too much. Like it doesn't go off a cliff or anything. Like it's just, it definitely no. regains yeah. that momentum, and I think it has a really strong finish. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that, uh, for sure. Um, and part of that strong finish, again, we're not talking spoilers yet, but I did want to use it as a segue just to bring up Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Ugh, which, by yes. the way, I was so happy they used the name Dr. Robotnik, at least for the most Me part. Too. It is such a better name, in my opinion. And it's it's strangely elegant how well they interwove Eggman 2. Like, it, they, they interweave both here, and that actually kind of worked. But yeah, Doctor uh, Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik is fantastic. He's really channeling that you know, mid-early 90s era of Jim Carrey, like, specifically Ace Ventura. And it really felt like it just kind of came almost from that generation, besides Jim Carrey being obviously a bit older now, which worked for the character. No, 100%. That was one of my favorite parts of the movie, if not my favorite part. I knew from the very first time I saw the first trailer that Jim Carrey was going to be the huge draw for me. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, aside from being a Sonic fan, I'm like, wow, I never thought about Jim Carrey <laughs> playing Dr. Robotnik, and yet it turns out he's perfect. You know, he, yeah. he nails Robotnik's kind of uh, eccentricities and arrogance and the way he looks down on everybody else, but he also adds his own very unique spin on the character, and I can't imagine anybody else playing him now. Like, that he is the reason that I am so excited for a possible sequel here. Like, I mean, other than the fact that I enjoy the movie anyway, but he's the main reason. I want to see him play this role again yeah. because he's so fun to watch. And you can tell that he's, ha he's having the time of his life. Oh, absolutely. It looks like he's having a blast out there, um, which is which is just fun. To, it's just fun to watch him do his thing. Yeah. And um, as you were kind of touching on, like I don't, it's, I never really thought about it before about how you would realize how how you would realize Doctor Robotnik in a real life setting, and I, I, this is not what I would have arrived at. But I don't think I could imagine it any other way. Now Jim Carrey killed it as Doctor Robotnik, and I couldn't picture him in any other like being portrayed any other way. Yeah, no, I you know I really can't either. And it's it it's just it's a it's a huge testament to. The casting directors, you know, to take a chance, not, a, not not that you take a chance on Jim Carrey, but, that you, you know, to take a chance on the fans' perception of this character and choose Jim Carrey for the role. Because, again, he doesn't physically, I mean, he's like one of the thinnest actors in Hollywood. He, he is, doesn't yeah. look he doesn't. like Dr. Robotnik no. at all. <laughs> and yet, someone at Sega or at Paramount had the foresight to be like, no, he's the guy, we gotta get him. It totally works, and I was impressed with how faithful they were to some extent to the games and especially with Dr. Robotnik how um, I mean true to his name he is all about robots and I'm glad they kept that right. element um, and there's some pretty good gags involving that too actually with uh, just how the robots work specifically and all and all that um, now let's talk about Sonic himself a little bit here because I know this is probably one of your bigger issues with or uh, uh, this was one of your issues with the movie I think was it was exactly how they portrayed Sonic more be more because perhaps you didn't quite expect what they did with Sonic. Well, and that was actually kind of the cornerstone of my enjoying the movie more a second time because I knew a little bit more of what to expect. But oh, I see. S s yeah, so Sonic in this movie, he's characterized in a, in a way that's different from what I expected because you have Ben Schwartz as his voice, and he generally, I mean, he sounds different from Roger Craig Smith, who does his voice in the games currently, but he still sounds like modern Sonic to me. He does, he still yeah, totally. Yeah, he, he sounds like modern Sonic, so I went into the movie expecting a version of modern Sonic, but that isn't what you get. He's he's younger, he's an excitable, hyperactive, uncontrollable little child, and his lack of maturity shows through many times throughout the movie, and he's not yet a hero. Like, you have to go into this movie kind of with the understanding that this is a new origin story for a new version of Sonic, mm -hmm. and that you're not getting the tried-and-true heroic, brash, arrogant, annoying Sonic who's beaten Eggman a million times. He has no idea who Dr. Robotnik is at the beginning of this movie because they haven't met. And so his, his lack of experience and his lack of maturity really shines through in this movie a lot, and I wasn't expecting that because, again, the, the trailers just kind of make you... It's like it's modern Sonic. 
So I wasn't expecting that, and that was something I, I thought there was kind of a mismatch between Ben Schwartz's voice and the mm -hmm. characterization of what you're looking at on screen. However, the second time through, because I, I kind of knew what to expect and I knew what I was getting with this version of Sonic, I actually enjoyed it a lot more. Wow. That's actually awesome to hear. I've, I've been thinking about maybe seeing this movie a second time, and I wondered if that might be the case. You know, because now they're, now they're used to the character, you can't be surprised by it again, of course. Right. And that can work to the movie's benefit at times. Um, so I pretty much agree with everything you said, except for one word there. You said it's not the annoying version of Sonic, or it doesn't have an annoying <laughs> edge. And well, see, he is annoying, that's true. He definitely is. Yeah. Yeah. Now, overall, I actually liked what they did with Sonic here. He's cute, and he has an edge to him, but he's never mean in the movie, or never really that mean at all. Um, no. But he can be annoying. This guy is talking nonstop, constantly. <laughs> um, and there were a few times where I'm like, okay, dude, chill, you know, <laughs> ease off a little bit. But it, was that a little bit better the second time, too? Like, did you find him less annoying? Yeah, I... I think because I, I went in, I, again, I, I kind of went in understanding that, that this version of Sonic, it, it wasn't going to betray my expectations this time. I wasn't expecting kind of an older, more mature Sonic. I knew, okay, no, this this is a younger, less mature Sonic. He doesn't have experience. He's He is a child. He grew up without any parental figures, basically, for 10 years, right? He, he had the parental figure, and then, you know, stuff happens, and then he lives essentially alone for 10 years. So, it, you know, in that context, it actually kind of makes sense that he is uncontrollable. He has no filter because mm -hmm. he never had any parental figure to give him one. He's just a hyperactive kid who yeah. wants to do it all and be it all and go as fast as he can, and <laughs> he just has unlimited, boundless energy. And what, I mean, most kids probably who had that kind of energy, if they didn't have adults to kind of teach them how to direct it, right? Probably right. would act a lot like that. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, that, that, actually, it, it, the logic checks out. So yeah. I think we're pushing up against uh, the limits of, of the generic portion of the discussion. So let's go ahead and move into phase two, where there will be some minor spoilers here from some plot points and maybe specific jokes. Things of that, that, uh, things of that nature, probably nothing too big, but if you want to go in as uh, you know spoiler-free as possible, you may want to now now. Otherwise, we're going into phase two, but again, we'll warn you one more time before we get into the big spoilers involving the ending and the credits or post-credits and all that. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about, about the specifics. You already touched on the beginning of the uh, movie a little bit. And I want to say, I love that opening. The opening is so good. Oh, yeah. how, how they realized what I assume is the real Green Hill Zone. or The actual Green Hill yeah, Zone, the actual yeah. Green Hill. And it looks so good. It, looked, it just looks it beautiful. And yeah, it was fun watching Sonic you know, run through this environment. Just you know, bouncing around uh, in baby form or kid sonic form whatever it was so cute yeah it's so adorable and then we see then we actually see his parental figure this time which is an owl um which i don't think is canon at all right has there been an owl parental figure for sonic before or you know i'm sure there's some hardcore sonic <laughs> fan out there who knows of some really obscure comic or something where yeah. maybe that was a reference that there no but it to my mind there has never been any parental figure of of an owl like nature he has had other parental figures in other media like uncle chuck in the comics and the cartoon right. um but no never an owl from what i can remember so while Sonic's running around, uh, he meets up with his mom again, and eventually he comes under attack by what appear to be some echidna-looking things. Is that yeah, right? yeah. It, they were definitely echidnas, and that's that was when I immediately set up and took notice. I'm like, okay, wait, <laughs> yeah, this is a Sonic movie, but they're actually digging, they're digging deep here, and I need to pay attention because they care about the lore. It's right. not just going to be, oh, Sonic's in on Earth and and interacting with humans. There's actually Sonic Universe stuff to pay attention to here. Exactly, yeah. We'll be touching more on that soon, I'm sure, but there's a few other things that potentially tie into that, but that kind of is exciting. It's our first look at what they could be exploring, possibly, in a sequel, you know, were they to. Um, right. So, anyways, now that he's coming to attack, his mom tells him, uh, or his foster mom, whatever, tells him, hey, you know, here's some rings, some golden rings. If you toss one and think about where you want to go, it will teleport you elsewhere, and uh, that way you can escape, you know, to safety whenever you need to. Um, and as and she actually sets one up to set him off to Earth to get him away from these you know attacking echidnas, and that's where he ends up you know in our world basically and how we you know the story starts progressing. Um, anyways, right. uh, that's all set up for what I think is what might be my favorite joke of the movie. 
is that Turtle Man? <laughs> oh, that? so good! Did you just it, see it, that? It, yeah, a little tortoise crossing the road and or turtle, whatever it was. And uh, Sog grabs it and just runs with it at top speed. <laughs> He's like, "This is your lucky day," and it was so good. And and the the uh, the crowd at my screening tonight was. They were really into it, which I think also, you know, made the experience a lot of fun because I yeah. felt like the crowd when we saw it was a bit low energy, and that may have something to do with the fact that it was at 10 a.m. on a Saturday <laughs> right. for some ungodly reason. Yeah. But um, no, the, the the premiere tonight, of course, a lot of it was the cast and crew, so they're naturally going to be into it. But there were a lot of kids in the audience too, mm-hmm. and a lot of fans. You could tell from the way they the, the way they were dressed, super fans of Sonic and. The whole theater clapped like at, at multiple That's scenes. Awesome. They cheered and clapped and whistled and laughing throughout and that tortoise scene got a ton of laughs so I think it's really landing with people yeah that's actually one thing that, that surprised me overall was just how funny the movie is um, I wasn't laughing the entire way but there were parts sure. that got me hard there were some really funny moments and uh, like I said that turtle might just might just take the cake but there were other great moments uh, throughout too I'm thinking of one line right now that Jim Carrey says that every time I think about it I, I crack up and I can't believe that it got through the script in that form um, and, and I guess, it, should, should I go ahead and say it, yeah, or is that it. too spoiled? Okay, so there's it's, it's like in the first third of the movie where he it's his first introductory scene, and he talks about how uh, Charlotte from Charlotte's Web leaves her big nasty egg sac. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he sees, and now you're going to see what comes out of my egg sac. <laughs> and it's just, it's his drones, it's his yeah. robots, but it's so, it's so inappropriate the it way is, he delivers it. Was it was so gross, and I, but I, 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 was I lost it then. Up. I was laughing so hard, I forgot about that. I was <laughs> hilarious it was, and it was just as funny the second time around and the the whole theater you could hear like gasping like whoa did he really just say that like <laughs> it's so it gross. was so great. great yeah that's awesome yeah i need to see this again um and i didn't even realize it at the time because i didn't realize that they were going to lean into the Eggman side of things um but the way to do it this time is different because he actually you know his robots his drones are egg shaped and that's when sonic starts calling him Eggman based on that and so i because we didn't know this at that point really or maybe we did i can't remember but you saw kind of start calling him Eggman that i didn't even realize that that egg sack thing was already kind of planting the seeds if you will exactly to set that all up so it, it works on multiple levels here ash it's very clever <laughs> no it is and like by the end of the movie when they have their their big standoff at the end he's just calling him Eggman, like like right. the, you would hear in the games and so it really in that way kind of comes full circle in the sense that okay now they know who you know they know who each other are and now they're arch enemies and he's calling him Eggman in the way we would expect coming from the games and i so i think that that's cool that they didn't go with the name Eggman as a default but that they work that in there in a meaningful way while still, you know, staying directly with Robotnik. Yeah, I mean, on the whole, I think, uh, I mean, again, I'm not, like, the biggest Sonic fan, obviously, even, or a, even a Sonic fan is, you know, borderline. Um, but in my perspective, it seemed like they were, they were pretty respectful of the source material, while obviously taking some pretty big liberties at points with the whole initial setup with Sonic, you know. Um, teleporting to Earth and effectively being an alien here. But it seemed like they tried to be like, as true to the series as possible. I think I agree with you. I think that they are were very respectful of the source material, way more than I expected them to be when I first caught wind of like, oh yeah, well, Sonic uses rings to warp around now. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this sounds so stupid. That's not what rings are for. But no, they make it work and it feels natural and they they take creative liberties in a way that that does really remain respectful of the source material. Again, you've got the echidnas there from the That's very it. beginning. Uh, you've got the big big thing at the end, which we can't talk about yet, but will soon. <laughs> and um, and and just throughout, you you know, they got Green Hills, which of course is the little the small town that it takes place in, but it but it works. It's a, it's a little cheesy, but it doesn't ever feel contrived or forced. And and even little sight gags, like the, the 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 road sign that says Hilltop Road, like right. you know, it's it's there. It, are you going to Hilltop Zone? No, but <laughs> but the clearly the love for the source material is there, and there's a lot of little things like that throughout the movie. That, as I said in my review, this is going to be so like one of those pausable movies that people just go frame by frame in certain scenes and pick out all the different little Easter eggs, and there are quite a few. Yeah. And I noticed some this time around that I didn't notice the first time, and I expect that to be the case when I see it the third time with my wife. I'm going to take her to see it this weekend. So, nice. um, so yeah, there's just a lot of stuff for hardcore Sonic fans to kind of watch for and listen for. And I'm not even just talking about music. My favorite reference of the entire movie was actually a sound effect, and I'm, I don't want to spoil it here because I want people to find it themselves, but I thought it was the coolest thing. Yeah, I know what you mean, and that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You picked it up on. I, I, I forget. I don't think I picked up on it during it, but I knew what you meant afterward. Um, right. 
I am going to take an issue with one thing you just said, though, Ash. Uh, the, the teleporting rings, are there not giant teleporting bonus round rings in Sonic? Right, there are, and that's, that's what I feel like they probably got that yeah. idea from, right? Yeah. So I do want to talk about, to talk about the middle segment of the movie a little bit more, um, like with the bar sequence. Uh, there is something that comes up a couple of times, and most specifically in that bar sequence, uh, where Sonic can move so fast that it actually results in a super, like, bullet time sequence, a little bit similar to what we've seen in the X-Men movies with... Right. Uh, what's that character's name? Do you know it's uh, Quicksilver. Quicksilver, thank you. Where yeah. he's, he can basically, like, you know, mess around with people, like, in, you know, while they're frozen. And yeah. Sonic does the exact same thing here, which I thought was pretty fun to watch. Like, even if the middle section kind of, you know, did get a little bit slow, those scenes were well done. When he's just setting things up, like, almost like a, um, a, uh, uh, Rube Goldberg machine. And once, like, right. he returns to normal time, you see the fruits of Sonic's labor happen all at once. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of like how, yeah, you just, like, you freeze everything and then all, you know, you, you, yeah, like, you put bullets in front of you that they all happen mm -hmm. all at once, like, when time goes back to normal. And that's obviously not with bullets because that, that would be really dark for Sonic. <laughs> yeah, it but, but, yeah, it, it's exactly what you said, is that he's so fast that everybody else is basically frozen in, in time because he's so much faster than everybody. And it very much, uh, it, it, it calls to mind those Quicksilver scenes from, I think it was Days of Future Past is, yeah, is when so. that I'm happened. Sure. And uh, they, it happens, I think there are two main instances of that kind of effect. There's one in the middle and one toward the end, and I think they're both just great. And just in general, the CG is really good. Yeah, the, um, the, the effects work yeah. Really, yeah, they're surprisingly good after the initial trailer. Um, Sock doesn't really look out, ever out of place, from what I recall. Um, no, yeah, it, it's, a, it's almost hard to even remember like that that was even ever a thing. Yeah, it's like pretty wild, right? the movie is good enough that I was like, it's more than good enough actually that I that I can't believe that they were ever going to release it in in such a sorry state with that model <laughs> that nobody liked. I mean, yeah. because the the end product that we just saw felt like they knew what they were doing all along, and that's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> that's a wild thing, isn't it? It's uh, crazy. It is. Yeah, I'm still blown away that this movie works at all. Like, I did expect, like, a train wreck, and the fact that it wasn't is is super, super impressive and really surprised me. Um, now, getting back to those uh, bullet time, Quicksilver segments real quick, there is, while they were very fun to watch, the only thing I didn't like about them is that they did make Sonic feel just a little bit OP. And by a little bit, I mean pretty OP. <laughs> uh -huh. um, where it never felt like he was in that much danger, because he can just freeze time, um... You know, and to basically resolve any problem he has until you know the, fi the the climax of the movie, basically. But before then, you know, it's his speed makes almost everything a non-issue. Well, I think it's. I mean, I think it's kind of supposed to, right? I mean, he's an alien uh, and on Earth with us, who we are not fast. We are nowhere near as fast as Sonic. And I think it would be a little weird if random fat dudes in a bar were able to keep <laughs> up with Sonic. Like that would be. Maybe that would actually be un unfortunate, I think. You know, that would actually take away from the movie. But I do think the movie does balance that out well when he tries to do that again with with Robotnik at the end. Mm -hmm. And Robotnik kind of outsmarts him because he has one of Sonic's quills, which he uses to go as fast as Sonic. And he basically beats him, to, at least for a while. I mean, at the end of the movie, it takes the power of friendship, right? <laughs> to to kind of set things right. But, you know... Robotnik does kind of get the edge on him because Sonic's like, I can do this and I'm confident and, you know, I'm so much faster than you. And he is faster than him until uh, Robotnik uses his own power against him and then he kind of meets his match. So I think if they were going to do that, I'm glad they did that at that point because Sonic should be blindingly fast compared to anybody, any human, right? <laughs> Well, he definitely uses the boost style of gameplay in the movie. Versus oh, that is <laughs> that is definitely true. And I, I will say, speaking of the CG and all the effects and stuff, I do love uh, the spin dash. Like, even though that is part of the, the second third of the movie, the road trip, right. I never get tired of seeing Sonic use his spin dash against no. uh, Robotnik's big machine that's chasing them. It's so cool. Looking. That was fun. And I love the whole gag with a machine turning a smaller machine than a smaller machine yeah. and a smaller machine. It's like, how many times can it divide like that? That was great. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, I think uh, we, we've already started moving into ending territory here, so let's just go ahead and go into the full spoiler section. So beware, we're going to talk about whatever we want here. So if you don't want to know about ending and post credit stuff, tune now now, because we're going to get into all of it super soon. Um, so let's get back to the ending sequence again, uh, Ash, because that I, I loved pretty much everything about that final segment. Um, one, as you touched on, because he had the, um, the quill, who was able to keep up with Sonic, and I loved the port, the segment that, led, that immediately led up to that, the scene that led up to that portion, where 
you had uh, Sonic going at like hyperspeed, and uh, as Robotnik as Robotnik's finger slowly moving toward the button to yeah. activate the uh, the quill power, so we can then keep up with Sonic. Just a cool little clever idea. It is a really cool, and it's a, it's a great idea. And even the scene right before that, uh, you know, where the, the whole thing starts it off is that they are cornered uh, at the top of the Transamerica building by by Robotnik, and you have this great scene where Sonic's like, "I know exactly what to do," and he pushes. Uh, Wachowski and his wife off the building because he knows he'll be able to save them before they fall, but then things go awry and it actually, even uh, even Robotnik has a great line there where he's like, well, I really didn't expect that, but <laughs> I expected not to ex- to not expect something, so it doesn't count. And it's just, it, it maintains the levity while being a genuine surprise, like, whoa, this isn't going the way Sonic thought it would. And to that point, I have to say, even though they are, quote-unquote, the humans, I did really enjoy the chemistry between James Marsden and Sonic, and also mm-hmm. Tika Sumter. Like, I think both Marsden and Sumter's characters, even though they don't, there's not a whole lot asked of them, I think they were well cast, and they do have a believable chemistry with Sonic by the end of the movie. Yeah, no, I agree. Do you actually believe that Sonic exists in this world and that, yeah. that they are all getting along? It doesn't... Yeah, it's kind of shocking how natural it all seems, <laughs> given yeah. everything around it. Well, and that's so key to the big the big final standoff between Sonic and Robotnik, because, and you know how much I love my super anime melodrama, mm-hmm. right? I love my power of friendship nonsense, and that is exactly what this movie doubles down on at the end. And it is essentially Sonic's you know desire to, to have friends to protect that is what uh you know powers him up and, and you know, helps him helps him save the day at the end but they go fully in on the power of friendship thing and that would not have worked as well as it does if that chemistry wasn't there between him and marston so i gotta say i, I was impressed by how natural their relationship felt even though he doesn't actually exist in front of marston I'll be fully honest, I don't remember exactly what part of the movie it was. It, it must have been near the end, I forget what scene exactly. But I didn't shed any tears or anything, but I did feel like a twinge of emotion at one point. <laughs> <laughs> Which is something Me I, too. Yeah, right? I, think I, I actually, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for, like, I am the perfect target for stuff like mm-hmm. that. Like, if, if somebody's going to try to make me cry, or somebody cry, I'm probably the prime target in a movie. <laughs> just because I, you know, you know, the power of friendship and love and all that, That just that's just who I am. But... Right. I didn't cry either, but I definitely got emotional, you know, a couple of times throughout. And I, the second time I saw it, because I knew it was coming, I was excited to see, you know, what the audience, how they were going to react. And and that part during the final standoff where James Marsden's like, you know, and he, you know, his name was Sonic and he was my friend. And mm-hmm. Sonic's eyes snap open and the lightning and the, he's just ready to, to kick ass and this is it. He's just going to take Robotnik out for his friends. And it's just so well done. It really is like that. That whole ending sequence is just fantastic. I, I love the uh, what's well, basically the Monsters Inc. door sequence when the yeah. robotics chasing Sonic through all the rings and teleporting all around the world, like to the pyramids and I think the Great Wall at some point and a few other locations. Just a, just a lot of fun. Yeah, it really was. I mean, I, I can't think of a part of the movie that wasn't fun other than again that the middle bit of a lull in the middle. Uh, and right. even then, it's not like that part is horrible. It's just not as fun as the rest of it. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, so one really fun scene, I, I think, comes uh, a- after the movie. So again, huge <laughs> spoilers. Stop watching if you don't want to hear these. Um, so right, a- so basically the movie's over. You see the tile card for it. But then we get one more scene. And that is uh, we're on the strange mushroom planet. And we see Robotnik. But we see now, I think, we see him in a reflection, I believe, at first. And he's gone... Full Robotnik. He's got like the crazy yep. mustache. He's bald and yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's bald, right? Exactly. He's just fully embracing the character we all, we all, you know, we grew up with, and I freaking adore that. I love that. Um, and now that he's on, uh, he's basically in what, what? What was it called? Mushroom? Not Mushroom Zone, but um. They, they never ex- explicitly call it this they in don't the movie, say it but that, it had, it has to be Mushroom Hill Zone, like exactly, from Sonic Three right. and Knuckles. It's got to be that. So, yeah, so they're already setting up a sequel. Like, Robotnik's already planning his next move. He's basically gone full-on crazy, and nothing is off-limits now for when he get, for uh, getting back at Sonic. And, yeah, I just, I kind of love that little, that little setup there for, you know, the, what the next movie could, could start exploring. And as part of that, after some of the credits, we then get the final scene, which, so... I, again, I'm not a Sonic fan, uh, or really a big Sonic fan. I never really cared about these characters that much. But when we see that, when we see that that, jo- that giant ring and 
tails pops through. I'm like, oh my god, yes! I lost it. <laughs> Me too. I was I was screaming. I was cheering. I was like, this is the best because I I've said this on Twitter and wherever before, but I love tails. He's like one of the ultimate like best friends in video games like you know to me you you got luigi you've got tails you've got zero you know those are like the three top best buddies to the very end like they got your back and i've always loved sonic and tails as a duo and i was going into this movie crossing my fingers that tails would either surprise me and be in it or just be at the end and in a sequel tease and Mm -hmm. i got the latter and they got his look down perfectly he looks great he sounds exactly like he should and the way he flies away the way they stylize his his twin tails kind of acting as propellers, he looks so good, and that just makes me so excited about the prospect of a Sonic the Hedgehog 2 movie that has him all throughout it. I want to see their friendship. I want to see the beginning of their friendship of this version of these characters. Yeah, that's it. Like, I mean, well, do do they do they even know each other? I guess we all know for sure, right? We don't um, really know. That's the thing, yeah. is it could be the beginning of their friendship, or he could be a friend that Sonic left behind when he right. had to leave as a kid. We don't, you know, Tails does obviously know who Sonic is. He's like, okay, you know, I just hope I'm not too late. I found him. So he could know Sonic from when he was a kid, or maybe they're going to meet for the first time. Yeah, but... Maybe he was enlisted by the mom to go find him. Right, exactly. But I just love what they did yeah, with Tails. Like, and yeah. Yeah, like I'm I'm not a huge Tails guy myself. And yet when I saw him pop through with that design they gave him, I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. That's so, like, I can't believe I'm hyped over freaking Tails. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I can't believe you are either, to be honest. Like, I never thought I'd have this this hype conversation no. with you about Sonic. Right? I, I think what really sells it is the fact that there's literally no tease of him before this. Like, we, there, right. no one mentions him. No one, see, you don't see him at all. He's not anywhere. As far as we were concerned, this movie is purely a Sonic or robotic movie. So seeing him was such a huge surprise, and it gave him such a great design, which, by the way, I would love to see the early version of him, like, in the oh, previous God. Sonic era. <laughs> I want to see that cut of the movie. Right. It'll never happen, it but I want to, I want that on the Blu-ray. There has I, to, so badly. There has to be concept art or something at the very least. But yeah, this has me excited. Like we have we have Robotnik going for Robotnik in basically a Sonic world. We have Tails back. Like what's going to happen next? Like I, I I really hope that this movie does well, and I think it will. I think it'll do well enough to warrant a sequel because I want to see where they go with this. Like now that they can finally, you know, now with the next one they can presumably get away from the get away from Earth, just go all in on the Sonic regions, and it could be something else. I love that idea. I mean, again, I don't think the human element messed up the movie at all. I do wish maybe there was a little more Sonic and Robotnik and a little less James Marsden and Tika Sumter, but they didn't, it's not, the balance isn't bad, and they don't mess up the movie at all. In fact, like I said, I think their chemistry is really believable. That said, I love the idea of a sequel getting off of Earth and Mm -hmm. and giving us an entire movie that looks like what we saw in the opening with, you know, the actual Green right. Hill Zone and, like, a whole, like, show me Sonic's world. I want to see Sonic thriving in his own world exactly. and defending it from this crazy Earth mad scientist gone insane. Like, what a cool dynamic that'll be. And and not only now do we have Tails, but you have to think about the possibility of Knuckles because we saw that the Echidnas were the ones who were trying to stop Sonic from leaving in the first place. Exactly. So, there's, you know, maybe we'll get Knuckles as part of the sequel. I mean, the fact that you and I are both this excited about what story I, elements might be I feel included, like I'm not crazy, I know. <laughs> it's crazy, but they, they really make you excited for a sequel in, they do. In, in, as a Sonic fan, at least on my end. Yeah, they can almost reverse, like, the premise of, of this one, or m- maybe the settings, rather, where rather than, you know, Sonic, you know, rather than Sonic being the alien, the humans, or the main human characters could be, like, the, the, the aliens on these Sonic worlds, or sonic-like world so yeah and i mean and and the, the way they set up dr robotnik as a you know the, the way he is in the games in terms of they don't go full on like he's not obsessed with roboticizing animals the way right, he is in the games true. but they go they do a version of that where he's obsessed with dissecting and taking apart you know any living thing that that he doesn't understand so you know to advance science and advance his own iq his own brilliance so the <laughs> idea of this crazy unhinged mad scientist who's obsessed with you know, dissecting anything he doesn't understand, <laughs> attacking Sonic's world, which is full of aliens he doesn't understand, is a really interesting dynamic. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, so, we're probably winding down here, but I have a question for you, Ash. How do you think this stacks up to Detective Pikachu? You know what? I It, it may be the, the fact that I'm more of a Sonic fan than a Pokemon fan. I'm, you know, I like Pokemon, but I'm not like a, you know, hardcore Pokemon fan mm. like Derek, per se. I enjoyed Sonic more, and I enjoyed Detective Pikachu, but I don't. I didn't feel the the desire to go 
see it again immediately like I do with Sonic, or like I did with Sonic. And even though I've seen it twice now, I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Yeah. I, I go back and forth on this. This is a tough one for me, because I, I also like Detective Pikachu. Um, and I think that movie might have been maybe a little bit more even overall, like a little bit more consistent. But I, do I think, think you're right. I do think the highs of Sonic are better. I think they are better than the highs of Detective Pikachu, especially because for me, Detective Pikachu completely fell apart in the third, in the third act, whereas uh-huh. that might be the best part um, besides the opening for me in, in the Sonic movie. And I think that's good. You start strong, you end strong. Uh, I think that's better than ending than ending weak as in uh, Detective Pikachu. So... I, I think Detective Pikachu is probably like technically and fundamentally a better movie than yeah, Sonic, I agree but that. I think but I think Sonic is a better Sonic movie than Detect a much better Sonic movie than Detective Pikachu is a Pokemon movie. So well, yeah, I think, it, I mean, that's a weird thing yeah. because it's a Detective Pikachu movie based on the game and not right. yeah, not a pure Pokemon movie. But yeah, you're. I think I'd agree with that. So yeah, I, th- I think is I think there's a lot. I think there's more to enjoy just straight up on a surface level in Sonic as a Sonic fan than maybe there is in Detective Pikachu as a Pokemon fan. And the, but again, I say that as someone who liked Detective Pikachu. But I just I maybe I need to go and see it again, but I feel like the highs were higher, as you said, for Sonic, mm-hmm. and maybe the lows were lower too. That might be also fair to say. It's kind of wild that we may be in a new era here, where we finally escape the video game curse. Where we're not necessarily getting like amazing movies, but we're at least getting watchable, fun video game movies, which is something we haven't had in, I mean, almost I would say it since like the original Mortal Kombat. Like it was just like bomb after bomb after bomb. But here we're getting, you know, uh, movies that are actually fun to watch and are, you know, pretty faithful to the source material, um, while updating them in some pretty smart and clever ways at times. Yeah, I mean, I've made it no secret that I'm personally, like, a big fan of, like, so bad they're great movies, <laughs> and, and I was saying, like, hey, if that's how Sonic turns out, I'm going to enjoy it for its badness. The, the, yeah. the original Street Fighter movie is unironically one of my favorite movies to, you know, have a beer and just get, you know, have a few drinks and just watch, because it's just such a mess, and it's it's so glorious in its badness, and I was thinking, <laughs> hey, maybe that's how Sonic's going to turn out, but it didn't. It's just, it, it's just good. It's not so bad it's good. It's just good, and I would be very excited about the prospect of a Sonic 2 that is as good as this, even if it isn't better. Like, it's this was just a, a lot of fun, and I, I think, like you said, we're in a new era of, of video game movies that might just be good video game adaptations. I hope so. The, the, the real test is going to be the Mario movie, how, however that turns out. That, well, that, <laughs> and, and see, I want to have this conversation with you again when the Mega Man movie comes out, because that was supposed to be dead, and it's not. It's still being made somehow, <laughs> oh, man. and I'm scared. I'm That's scared about how it's going to turn be. out, but, but it, look, if the Sonic movie can, can bring... Our opinions together, the fact that we agree so much on this movie is insane. If it Sonic is. can do that, who knows? Maybe a year or two years from now, you'll be saying, man, you know what, Ash? This is Mega Man. I can see why you like him. This movie's pretty cool. <laughs> Probably not, but we'll see, right? Well, it's possible we agree, but maybe for entirely different reasons. So. Right, exactly. <laughs> we'll see. All right, Ash, any final thoughts about the Sonic movie you want to get out there that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I think I would just say that uh, if you're a Sonic fan going in to see this movie... Just remain open-minded. Don't go into it expecting the game on screen, because you're not going to get that, except for the credits, which, by the way, are incredible. Oh, like, yeah. The, I'm glad the about credits, those Yeah, They're the credit so sequence. They're oh, so good. Oh, man, those are amazing credits. It might be the single best credit sequence I've seen. Uh, in the, I was going to say in the movie, but maybe game two. They're so good, period. They are fantastic, and so I, I think other than the credits, as long as you're willing to remain open-minded and not going, go in expecting to see... The game you've the games you've played forever on screen, I think you're gonna have a good time. Just stay yeah. open minded and go into it and knowing that this is a different version of Sonic with his own origin story. Yep, that's exactly it. Don't expect a masterpiece. Just go in looking to have a fun time, and you hopefully will will have that. So, yeah. Well, I think that about wraps up for our Sonic movie discussion, so thank you so much for watching. If you liked our discussion, make sure to like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Game Explain. You can find links to those in the description below. It's a good way to keep up to date on everything we post. And of course, click that subscribe button for tons more on the Sonic movie, I imagine, maybe, in the future. Or future Sonic movies, who knows? Whatever Sonic's coming up. And everything else Nintendo as well. We'll catch you later. Bye.